Hello everyone. In this brief episode, we're going to continue our examination of understanding problems of poverty and the programs and policies that are likely to help the poor escape from their poverty, looking now at some insights from behavioral economics. Behavioral economics has become very important in the field of development economics, just as it has in economics more broadly. Of course, reflecting the Nobel Prize awarded to Daniel Kahneman back in 2003 with, for his work with Amos Tversky, and more recently, the 2017 Nobel Prize that went to Richard Thaler. Just as an overview, first, psychological factors in reducing poverty are increasingly understood now as essential, and they're being applied in a systematic way now to poverty programs, both in their overall design and in their implementation. Some of the findings we'll talk about are the cognitive tax of poverty, a previously unrecognized impact on, on, uh, of poverty on people's ability to essentially escape from it, and the importance of what's been called the bandwidth problem, which we all recognize in that it's just not possible to focus on too many urgent needs and requirements at once, and so that you have to leave some aside. Poverty also is now understood as having a major impact on anxiety and other mental illness such as depression. In turn, the presence then of mental illness on the other hand, affects poverty and makes it more difficult to escape from poverty. All of this has specific implications for program design and implementation. So let's turn to this hidden cognitive tax on poverty. The general observation is that cognitive challenges, being able to solve cognitive problems, increase with stress. This is something that psychologists have known and studied for a very long time. For the poor, there are a lot of sources of stress, more than for the non-poor, and they range across a wide range of categories here. They include financial worries. This can be a problem. Persistent noise, however, is known to cause stress. Air pollution, disrupted sleep, chronic pain, which turns out to be associated with poverty. So stress and environmentally linked deficits then that occur in cognitive functions include focus, internal and external attention, using the psychological terms here, inhibitory control, cognitive flexibility, and planning. So one example that I think is very telling, very insightful, informative, it's been found that farmers in India perform worse during the financial stress before the harvest than after the harvest. Many times the poor are in their worst financial and basic needs conditions just before the harvest because it's been a long time since the last harvest. So food supplies may be running especially low money that was earned from selling some of the harvest may also be running very low. So accordingly, stress over finance is high. So high that this has been found to be the equivalent to approximately 10 IQ points difference. So more broadly, there's growing attention to the bandwidth problem that I mentioned. And so here, the need to focus on some urgent financial problems, broadly speaking, leaves less cognitive capabilities for some other very important activities that would help them and their families break out of the poverty they live in. And these include attention to preventive health care, adherence to drug regimes, especially important given the problems of health related to poverty, promptness to appointments, which can affect your ability even to get assistance for the poor that may be available, let alone opportunities for work, attentiveness to children, a risk for the intergenerational transmission of poverty, management of family finances, again, a risk of, of staying in poverty, and general work productivity. 
So the result is that it's more difficult inherently for the poor to take actions that would improve their conditions. This is not because of who the poor are, this is because of the conditions in which people live in poverty. So for, you know, instead of blaming the poor for their problems, the idea then here is to respond constructively and creatively to the constraints that the poor actually face. And again, these constraints are often present simply because of the nature of poverty in ways that weren't really fully understood until economists focused more as we did on the behavioral dimensions. So implications for property program design. So the cognitive burden research shows the importance of assistance to improve capabilities of people and in this way, their ability to make good decisions. Richard Thaler, the Nobel laureate in 2017, talked about choice architecture. That is to say, take into account problems of choice in the very construction of the programs intended for the poor. Another key point here is what we could call the importance of being reminded. When there's many distractions, this is very helpful. And so this can be both explicit and implicit. Explicit reminders can be in the form of regular text messages that can be gotten even on the very simple cell phones that are more widely available throughout the world now. But also implicit messages. That is to say, for example, where assistance is available, where the assistance is located. That can have to do with, on the part of organizations, say, but another example is putting chlorine tablets for purifying water at the source where the poor collect their water in buckets, let's say, at, at uh, streams or whatever, um, rather than somewhere else, even in the home, so that they're being reminded in the right way at the right time, in according to another major studies finding. So then there are some specific implications of behavioral economics for this program design. So first, prioritize the timing for programs and activities for when the cognitive load on the poor is likely to be lower. And this, of course, as you can imagine, depends upon circumstances, but in the case of the farmers in India, right after the harvest, certainly not right before it. Try to make any interviews that are required to get assistance less threatening, less challenging. The more that's the case, first of all, the more the poor may be willing to interact, to get assistance that they really could benefit from along with their families, but also they may be able to respond more constructively in those environments with less stress. Simplifying application forms, helping people fill them out, this is especially important in many cases that you find in poverty in developing countries in which the poor have really minimal literacy skills, and in some cases, simply lack them. Strengthen nutrition programs. We now need to understand fully that nutrition has a huge impact on cognitive function, as well, of course, as physical function. Address the high incidence among the poor of anxiety, depression, and other mental illnesses. And last, and certainly not least, increasing emphasis on early development, early childhood development, and the development of non-cognitive skills. This is of great importance, not just in developed countries, but for developing countries also, if we want to break the intergenerational cycle of poverty. We must start with early childhood. Thank you.